Uh, welcome back. This is a video that we're doing today on balancing equations and really not so much explanations as it's just me working examples by turdferg67. Make sure and subscribe for lots of science stuff. But anyway, let's see what we can figure out here and talk, let's talk about what it means to balance an equation like it is that we're doing here. Well, the thing is, if you go back to like chapter one of chemistry or physical science, the thing that you're going to end up learning is that matters not created are destroyed effectively, which means if there's one sodium atom on the left of this equation, there needs to be one sodium atom on the right. And that stands true for everything. One oxygen here, there needs to also be one oxygen atom over here. If there's two hydrogen atoms, there should be two on this side. Uh-oh. One plus two. Well, this is where balance and equations come in. The best way to teach this that I know is by doing what we call our T. So we put a little T chart like this. And we're going to list our elements on the left. We've got an Na. We've got an H. And we've got an O. And we better have the same Na, H, and O on the right side of this equation. So now we're going to come in here and see if we can't figure this out. Let's first do this. Let's number how many we've got of each one of these. So sodiums, I've got one sodium on the left. I've got two H's and one O. And on the right side here, I've got one in A. Uh, I've got H's. I've got one plus two. So I've got three, and then I've got one O. Well, this problem is great. We've got 1 and 1 and 1 and 1. The only thing that's a problem is this 2 and 3. So what I want to do is look at how could I make this 2 and 2. Well, you could just try and slide in here, erase that 2, and now replace it with a 3. Ha-ha. I have balanced an equation. No. You cannot change the subscripts. That too is here for a reason. It's water. This we cannot change. Vice versa, somebody might say, well, just erase the two on this side. And now we've got one and one, and that would make two. Ha ha. Hydrogen is the same thing. We cannot change that two. You cannot change the equation written in front of you. The only thing we can do is add what's called coefficients. A coefficient is a multiplier that we can add in front of any piece of this equation. Now, we can't jam it in the middle of one or anything. All we can do is add it in front. They're multipliers. In other words, if I needed four H's here, I could stick a two in front of this. Bam. Two times two would be four, and one is five, which would only screw up this problem more. So I am going to erase that, because I sure don't want to put a two there. But when I look at this, all I'm thinking about is I wish, I wish that was a 1. Because if that was a 1, I'd have 1, and then I could have 2 and 2, and I'd have this equation balance. So here's what I'm trying to think of. What times 2 would be equal to 1? Hmm. Wait a second. I know this. 1 half. Half of 2 makes 1. So what I can do is add a coefficient of 1 half in front of that H2. Half of 2 makes 1 plus 1. And now my equation is balanced. 1 and 1, 2 and 2, and 1 and 1. Now, if you're really wondering, so what will I ever use this balance equation for? Well, start watching the chemistry videos, and then you'll actually see more of it. So we will later on in science, you've got to be able to balance these equations. If you can't balance equations, you're going to have a tough time in chemistry later on. So this is very important. Let's do another example. And my hardest thing is not writing gigantic. So CaOH2 plus H2SO4 yields... And this would be CaSO4 plus HOH, which would be H2O in itself. And if you need to learn how to write uh, equations, you need to watch a chemistry video, not just a physical science video. But anyway, same thing. Once again, I'm going to make my T for this problem. 
On the left, I've got CA. I've got an O. I've got an H. I've got H again, but I've already written that, and an S. And then an O again, which I've got. So I've only got four elements. CA, O, H, S. And now I want to go back through and I want to count these. So CA, I got one. O, I've got two and four. So that's six. I'm going to write those in red. Add a little flair to my presentation. So I've got one. Two times one is two plus four is six. H's, I've got two times one. That's what you do with these parentheses. That's two H's, two times one. Two plus two H's is four. And then the S's, I've got one. Well, now let's come back over here. CA's, I've got one. Uh, O's, I've got one plus four, so that's five. And then I've got, let's see, H, I've got two. And S's, I've got one. So now, let's start balancing this. I've got one and one, six and five, four and two, and one and one. Well, the good thing is, two of these are already balanced. Awesome. But two of them are not. The hardest trouble I've always had, or used to, when I was first learning, was how to know which one to try and balance first, the O or the H. Balancing equations is nothing but learning a bunch of tricks. Here is a great trick to help you pick which one of these to balance first, O or H. Do me do a favor. How many times do you see a CA in this question? I see a CA two times. I'm going to write that off to the side. I see the letter O, one, two, three. I see the O in four places. H, one, two. I see three times I see the H. That's a horrible three. There we go. S, I see one and two. I see two S's. Always, if you don't know which one of these to pick, pick the one that you see the least number of times. So like if S was unbalanced, I would try and fix it first since it's only twice. Well, in this case, I'm trying to decide between O and H. Well, I only see H three times, so I'm going to focus all my attention on this H. So I've got four H's on the left. I cannot... I cannot erase that 2 and put a 4 there. That doesn't work. So what I have to end up doing, well, I just made a mess of that. So we'll go back over here, H2O. I can't change the 2. But what I can do is multiply that 2 by something to get 4. So now I'm just left with what times 2 would give me a 4. Well, that's easy. A 2. So if I put a 2 here, 2 times 2 gives me 4 H's, but don't quit. This 2 also affects that O. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. Now look at what you've done. You have fixed the O while trying to fix the H. So now we're on the pretty good roll of doing these questions. So that's a balanced equation. All it took was one number to get it balanced. Let's take a look at the next one. Fe plus, I'm going to write this one bigger because it's a shorter equation. Fe plus O2 yields Fe2 O3. I know this one's really easy, but I'm still going to make that chart anyway. Fe O, Fe O. I've got now the count, 1 Fe, 2 O's, on the, that side, 2 and 3. Here's the thing you're going to learn. Every one of these questions, there's more than one way to work the problem and get it right. Here's how I'm going to work this one. I'm going to start off, I don't really have to count because there's one, there's, there's two Fe's and two O's. So, potluck, which one do you want to fix first? Well, let's do Fe. I've got two Fe's on this side, but only the one here. So what can I multiply Fe by to get two? Well, that's going to be easy. A two. Two times one Fe gets me two. Now, this two does not touch the O2. This plus separates it. So two Fe's and then everything else. So congratulations, you fixed that. 
Now, this is where some people would start going crazy and be like, ah, I've got three and two. I don't know what to do. Well, it's easy. What do you wish you could do? You need that to be a three, right? If that was a three, this problem would be fixed. Well, once again, we can't change that number. That O2 has got to stay O2. All you have to do, though, is think, what times 2 would give you the number 3? What times 2 would give you the number 3? Hmm. 1 and 1 half. 1 and 1 half times 2 would be equal to 3. And now you've got a balanced equation. And I wrote a pretty sloppy looking 1 and 1 half. But anyway, 1 and 1 half times 2 would get you your 3. And now you've got a balanced equation. Now the thing is, there's other ways There's other ways you could have done that problem. You didn't have to do the 1 and 1 half. You could have went Fe plus O2 yields Fe2 O3. You could have actually thought, wait a second, 2 and 3... 3, 2, 6, and 6. Got it. But if you did this approach, 2 times 2, that gives you 4 FEs, which means now I need a 4 over here. But that's still a balanced equation. Again, I can add coefficients all day long. Let's go to another one. This one's actually kind of hard. So let's do it. I'm going to skip around a little. So... AL NO3 to the 3 plus H2SO4 yields AL2SO4 3 plus I'm running out of room HNO3. So there's my equation barely fit it on there. Now this thing's huge compared to the others. I've got an AL. I've got an N. I've got an O. I've got an H. And I've got an S. So I've got five elements in this one. AL, N, O, H, S. Well, the only thing we can do is what we already know how to do. Start counting these things. I've got one AL. I've got N's. I've got 3 times 1 is 3. O's, I've got 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4, which means I've got 13 O's in this question. H's, I've got 2. And S's, I've got 1. Now let's go to the other side. AL's, I've got 2. N's, I've got 1. O's, I've got 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3. I've got 15 oxygens over on that side. H, huh, I've only got 1. S's, 3 times 1 is 3. Now, let's see if anything works. 2 and 1, 3 and 1, 13, 15, 2 and 1, 1, 3. Ah, ah, I have no idea. Nothing is balanced. So I've got to pick one of these to start. Wait a second. Mr. Cole told me a way to figure out how to pick these. I got this covered. I see AL twice. I see the letter N twice. see the letter O four times. I see H twice and S twice. Aha! He told me, Pick the one that you see the least. Dang. The only one I know I don't want to pick first is the O. All the others are 50-50. I mean, look at this. I could pick this one, this one, this one, or this one. So what do you do when it's like this? How do you pick the one to do first? Any, mini, miny, mo, catch a tiger. No. Effectively, though, yes. Just pick one of these. 
Uh, and here's another trick. I've already told you one trick, and that was the counting thing. The other trick is this. Let's say you pick AL. Why? Well, it's first. If you pick AL and then you can't figure out the problem, well, go back and redo the problem and pick maybe N to do this time. And if that don't work, pick H. And you know what happens a lot of times if you can't get it on the first try, you can get it on the second try over here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll come back to this one. And here we go. I've got two ALs on the right and one on the left. So I need two of these. So I'm going to put a 2 here and multiply everything here by 2. Everything by 2. So this becomes 2 ALs. 3 times 1. 3 times 1. There's 3 N's times 2. Now I've got 6 N's. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2 is, that's 18 plus 4. I'm all the way up to 22 now on my oxygens. Now, good grief. Well, that's fine. I, at least I did fix the AL. Well, now let's move on to the N. I got 6 on the left and 1 on the right. So what can I multiply that by to get my 6? Well, I'm going to have to write it very small. But I'm going to jam the number 6 in there. I can't jam it in the middle. All I can do is put it in front of this. Now, this is where people mess up. They go straight for 6 times 1 in, and they skip the H. The thing is, do it in order. 6 times 1 H changes your H's on the right to 6. 6 times 1 N changes your N's to 6. Uh-oh. 6 times 3 oxygens is 18. And then look at this. 3 times 4 was 12. You've got 18 and 12 oxygens. We've got 30 oxygens now. Woo-wee! All right, that's fine. I'm not going to freak out. I've got O, H, and S left, so I can do one of these. Well, I'm not going to do O because it's in here four times. So I'm going to move to H. I've got six H's on the right, but only two here. What times two will get me to six? A three. But remember, when you put that three there, that multiplies everything. So 3 times 2 H's, 6. 3 times 1 S is 3. 3 times, uh oh, 3 times 4 O's is a 12. Plus 3 times 3 was 9, and 2 made 18. 18 and 12 makes 30. Now that's what I call, dang. All right, there you go. Two, three, nothing, six. This equation is balanced at this point. All right, that's the starting of getting this done. If you need more, I'll make a second equation. I'll call it examples video number two and see if that helps you.